it's Navid Sattar, I'm Professor of Metabolic Medicine at the University of Glasgow uh, and I'm also an honorary consultant in Department of Clinical Biochemistry, Glasgow Royal Infirmary. There are a number of reasons we think uh, patients with uh, rheumatic or autoimmune disease have got increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, one, one of the key factors which seems to unite all rheumatic diseases is levels of inflammation, uh, which is not just inflammation clearly within um, certain areas, but inflammation that actually gets into the blood system and then infects the blood vessels and of course the heart function. Um, and that's clearly a key driver. As, as well as that, there are other factors which may simply be that um, in patients or individuals with rheumatic disease, um, because their physicians have um, concentrating so much on dampening their disease activity that they have less time to look at for cardiovascular risk factors or to modulate their cardiovascular risk. Uh, and in addition, once patients have rheumatic diseases, generally they tend to have lower levels of physical activity um, and other factors specifically in terms of drug treatments for rheumatic disease, some of them may have adverse effects on the vasculature. So it's a whole host of reasons um, which combine to enhance risk in cardiovascular disease. Uh, in, in the, it's now clear that inflammation, um, at least in patients with autoimmune disease, is a causal factor for in accelerating the risk of heart disease. Now the processes by which that occurs are still being investigated uh, to be, um, in a number of ways, but it is clear that once inflammation gets into the circulation, it can irritate the blood vessel lining, it can alter um, your other blood risk factors including your cholesterol in particular, your protective cholesterol which is the HDL in a bad way. Um, it can also make your blood stickier um, and also cause you to have a process called insulin resistance which makes you more likely um, to uh, in a sense um, develop obesity but all of these factors combine to accelerate cardiovascular disease. So the link between inflammation and cardiovascular disease has become reasonably consistent, at least from the rheumatoid literature. In a number of ways, uh, there is research on the going, uh, ongoing in the molecular level, w which really, to be honest, informs us on the pathways of risk. But there are two factors. On the clinical level, I think it's now clear that patients with, for example, lupus have a higher risk of heart disease. Therefore, those individuals sh should see themselves as individuals who should be monitored for cardiovascular risk factors more uh, as at least as aggressively as the general population, perhaps more so, in the sense that they should have their blood lipids checked, they should have their blood pressure checked, they should try to pay more attention to their smoking and try and stop smoking if they possibly can. In other words, they have more to be gained from stopping smoking and more to lose if they don't. They have also more to gain from being physically active than otherwise and eating well and, and staying a normal weight. Of course, those, the caveats being that's not necessarily easy within the current environment. But patients with lupus should see themselves as high risk, which is driven by the disease, which in some ways we can modulate to some extent, but that risk is still there, but that they ha therefore have more reason to be fit and active and eat, have a healthy lifestyle and more reason to have their other risk factors attended to. Over and above that, because they have lupus, their physicians should also now increasingly be aware that, that they themselves um, should target the cardiovascular risk factors more aggressively and in particular perhaps um, as individuals they should be more um, applicable to be given statins or other blood pressure tablets at lower thresholds to take account of the, f the fact that independent of their traditional risk factors lupus has an effect on disease over and above these things. So I think that's where we're at in the clinical sense. In the mechanistic sense, we're trying to work out what it is specifically about lupus that accelerates risk. One of the hypotheses being in particular, I think, which is probably the most strongest evidence, is that lupus, by the process of its um, antiphospholipids or whatever, affects the protective HDL particle in a bad way. But that, I think, is more a research domain and it will not yet influence clinical practice. Uh, if I had lupus, I would be uh, particularly keen for my physician to me measure my risk factors for cardiovascular if they haven't done so already. Um, and I would be particularly keen um, uh, for them to discuss those risk factors in my, uh, and in particularly in conjunction with the fact that I have lupus so, we can, um, so the physician can play his part in helping me uh, manage my disease. Uh, and, and other than that, I think if I do stop smoking, try and obtain the best evidence possible to try and help me stop smoking. Most individuals 
to be honest, uh, perhaps 70% will, because of smoking is addictive, will not stop smoking. But there are some people who either on their own or with evidence-based medicines can be helped to stop smoking, which has huge benefits, not just for cardiovascular disease, but more widely, as, the, as you all know.